1819. The newly born United States of America sat in a state of delicate balance. 111,111 free states, 11 slave states. From the outside looking in, it appeared to be perfect harmony. Equal states, equal representation, equal influence in federal affairs. But this was only from the outside. Look again. In reality there was no focus on balance for the Americans. Instead, all that mattered now was expansion, manifest destiny. That was the reason why the United States government was hell-bent on snagging more and more territory. Although the phrase wouldn't be coined until the mid-1800s, the belief held by many Americans that it was the nation's destiny to expand westward, as far as can be done, drove the U.S. to do just that. Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Georgia, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Maryland, South Carolina, New Hampshire, Virginia, New York, North Carolina, Rhode Island, Vermont, Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio, Louisiana, Indiana, Mississippi, Illinois, and Alabama. That was the whole of the United States. Thus far as of 1819, but only a year later, this would change. In 1818, the Missouri Territory previously obtained as part of the Louisiana Purchase began its push for statehood. The following year, the District of Maine would be allowed to break off from Massachusetts and do the same. It didn't take long for this to cause a conundrum for the contemporary U.S., however, because the addition of two more states at the potential to upset the numerical balance between slave states and free states. On the one hand, Northerners and pro-abolitionists in Congress argued that the addition of Missouri, which seemed to quickly lean toward wanting to become a slave state, would expand slavery and thus bring them further away from their goals. The Southerners, though, were obviously in favor of adding another slave state, and thus argued that any new candidate for statehood should have the right to decide for themselves, just as the first 13 colonies which side on the fence they want to fall on. The debate in both the House of Representatives and the Senate would continue into 1819, at which point Maine was now brought into the mix as Henry Clay, the Speaker of the House at the time, suggested that Missouri should be added to the Union as a slave state, but that Maine should also be added, contrarily as a free state. This proposal was subsequently debated into yet another year when in 1820, the Senate added to the bill requiring that any other territories north of the 36 degree, 30 latitude line that had been agreed upon below Missouri's lower border could only enter the Union as free states with everyone finally, in some level of agreement, the Missouri Compromise was signed into law. This triggered a tit-for-tat war of adding one new slave state for every new free state and vice versa, starting with Arkansas in 1836, Michigan the next year, and Florida in 1845. And since Florida was a slave state, it was assumed that the next territory to enter the Union and statehood would be another free state, but this became complicated. When Texas had a demanding request for the United States, Annex US Now, the history of Texas has been a roller coaster thus far, and yet it was only now preparing for its biggest climb yet. Texas, up until recently a part of Mexico after being freed from the grip of the Spaniards, wanted to join a different union, the USA. The Texans' pleas were initially ignored by the US government, which wasn't in much favor of annexing the nearby territory, with growing pressure from Britain for Texas to be an independent nation. And America's undeniable thirst for expansion opinions would soon change nevertheless, and Texas would in fact join the Union on December 29, 1845. Here was the issue, though. Texas wanted to be a slave state, which would offset the balance the Northerners had tried so hard to keep. Furthermore, Texas had made claims to territories that put it in direct conflict with its former host. Of Mexico and with Texas newly a part of the United States, those presumptuous claims were now the responsibility of the U.S., something that Mexico didn't take lightly. Recently elected President James K. Polk, however, didn't care one bit what the Mexicans thought. Instead, he was an aggressive supporter of Manifest Destiny and quickly, upon his inauguration, hoped to seize the contested territories. 
Thus Polk at first attempted to purchase his desired lands. He sent American diplomat John Slidell to offer the administration in Mexico City $30 million in exchange for California, New Mexico, and disputed territories along the Texas border. The Mexicans, aghast and unshakably against such an idea, declines to even meet Slidell, which angered Polk. The Manifest Destiny A reporter would not be swayed by this rejection and instead decided that if diplomacy wouldn't work, he would reel his neighbors into a war he knew the United States would win. As a result, in the early weeks of 1846, the president sent American troops to the Texas border to egg the Mexicans on. And it worked. It only took a few months for Mexican soldiers to fire on the Americans and give Polk the excuse to declare war. With the Mexican-American War underway, debates continued within the United States pertaining to the slave state versus free state debacle with the free state.